Idris Elba is a British actor who, you might be surprised to learn, has appeared in films that have generated almost $10 billion in box office. That's pretty impressive for an actor who doesn't originally hail from North America, and even more impressive for a man who used to perform as a DJ while trying to keep his hopes of breaking into the entertainment business alive. The road to superstardom was littered with obstacles blocking Idris's way, not the least of which was the fact that when he originally moved to America, he had trouble booking work because of his accent. Things eventually got so bad that Idris resorted to selling marijuana just to get by. With his career failing, to launch, Idris Elba's first marriage suffered, and he was forced to live out of his car for weeks at a time with nowhere to go. While reflecting on this difficult period of his life, Elba told GQ magazine, I remember thinking, I've got to make something of myself here. I just parked my car near where I lived, thought about going upstairs, but the energy was so bad, so I slept in the car. That was a low point, and I did that for six weeks. Go home, take a shower, but there was nowhere to go. Thankfully, it wasn't too much longer after that when Idris snaked his first big role on American TV as Stringer Bell in The Wire. That series launched his career into the stratosphere and he's never come down since, consistently becoming one of this generation's most popular performers, whether it's on the big screen or the small one. Of course, once he began making money by the handful, Idris invested some of it into a stunning home in the city of his birth, London, England. Back in 2016, Idris found his dream home along Wallace Road for 2.5 million pounds. This three bedroom property was formerly being used as a charity office before Elba decided to transform it into the perfect place to live. When it comes to the interior of this home, details have been kept close to the vest, but considering how elegant the exterior of this place looks, Idris has likely spared no expense to make sure the inside reflects the outside. In fact, I know he has. And I know this because he's got some very upset neighbor. Most of the world might be hoping that Idris Elba will eventually be selected as the new James Bond, but his own neighbors are more worried about seeing less of him. Turns out, Elba has upset nearly all of them with plans to build a mega basement film and music studio beneath his grade two listed London home. Idris had already submitted plans to the local city council that constitutes a vast underground studio that would serve as a business 15 hours a day, seven days a week. Shortly after this news was made public, his neighbors held a special community meeting to voice their frustrations over these plans. One of those neighbors went as far to tell the Daily Mail, there is almost unanimous upset. We know he's a DJ and we don't want the noise. According to the details of the plans, Idris will demolish large sections of his current basement setup and then extend the structure into the back garden to accommodate for the post-production facility. Once completed, the site will operate with business hours from 8 a.m. to 11 p.m., seven days a week with two full-time staff. The facility will reportedly include a production room, a live room for personal performances, edit suites, and even a home theater that's been described as similar to the one already in place at the exclusive London Private Members Club Soho House. Considering his nearly unparalleled success as an actor, I guess I shouldn't be surprised that Idris is so willing to take his work home with him. If his neighbors will let him, that is. Then again, it's not like the man doesn't know how to relax when the time is right, as I'm about to show you. Few people know how to holiday better than celebrities, and Idris Elba is no exception. In fact, he might have some of the best taste out there. Just a handful of years ago, Elba decided to engage in a little R&R by heading to the one and only Riti Ra in the country of Maldives with his new wife Sabrina, where they stayed in one of the property's amazing water-filled villas. Set on one of the largest and most private islands in North Malayatol, Idris's rental can only be reached by walking along high stilted wooden walkways. After a short trip, you'll find the one-bedroom home floating over the turquoise waters of the Indian Ocean. Only one bedroom might sound small, but this rental features a sprawling layout complete with a living and dining room, as well as a spa-like bathroom. Room. You know, just in case all that ocean water surrounding you isn't calming enough. Designed with local architecture and decor in mind, the interior of this getaway is chic, tranquil,
technical and impressive. Alba also had access to a private infinity pool that blends seamlessly with the jaw-dropping background and is surrounded by catamaran nets set up for lounging. Not far from there is a separate balcony that boasts a daybed overlooking the ocean, as well as an outdoor dining area that's perfect for a meal or two under the stars. Even with direct access to the nearby lagoon, Idris didn't spend his entire vacation hiding away. Instead, he left his luxury accommodations to explore the resort's surroundings. Then, when New Year's Eve rolled around, Idris broke out his turntables and gave a surprise performance for a number of people on the island. Vacationing in the Asian islands must be one of his favorite things to do, because just a couple years later, Idris was back on that same side of the world. This time, he was vacationing at the glamorous Samoana Villa in Thailand on the island of Koh Samui, boasting seven bedrooms, five jacuzzis, a home theater, a fully stacked gym, and even a pool with an underwater sound system, Idris shelled over 2,000 pounds a night just to stay here. By looking at how stunning this place is, it was definitely worth the expense. Speaking of expensive things, let's take a look at a new London business Idris opened just a couple of years ago. In 2021, Idris Elba opened a bar in London called Port Noir, which can be found in the district of King's Cross and puts special emphasis on on wine. Idris first discovered his passion for the business after being invited to the prestigious Sanger Viticulture School in Champagne, France back in 2018. Following that little adventure, Idris created his own line of champagne called Port Noir. Less than three years later, he'd opened this new venue that shares the same name. The coolest thing about this spot is the possibility of maybe running into the man who plays Luther himself. And don't think it's outside the realm of possibility, something that might happen. After all, he recently told Metro UK, I've been away a lot for work lately to Australia and South Africa, but now I'm home, so you will definitely see me down there chilling in a corner somewhere. According to promotional materials, the bar has over 800 wine bins to go along with a series of temperature controlled tasting rooms. There's also a giant terrace with enough seating for over 70 people. Idris said he was shooting for a very specific kind of aesthetic, which he explained to Big Hospitality as, when I'm going out to bars, it's mainly two types I like to drink and I like the old school sawdust on the floor, dartboard out the back where you know the name of the bar staff and can feel super relaxed. Then, at the other end of the spectrum, I also like those with a bit more sophistication. The kind of place that you know won't get rowdy, but you can come in for a quiet drink and it feels a bit more exclusive. Well, I'll give you three guesses which of those options Port Noir more resembles and the first two don't count. Of course, there'll be delicious cocktails to choose from, including the Port Noir flower with wild hibiscus syrup, vodka apricot liqueur, and champagne, as well as the Twinkle Spritz, which is comprised of vodka, elderflower, cordial, prosecco, and soda water. There is also a tasty offering when it comes to food, including beef cheek, as well as a large cheese and charcuterie selection. So it sounds to me like Idris has his bases covered and then some. Well, there you have it, a rare glimpse into the home and private life of superstar Idris Elba. It sure does seem like the man has his priorities straight, spending most of his time living and working out of his London home while still finding the time to recharge at some of the most beautiful destinations across the world. Thanks for joining me on this latest episode, and before you head out, consider answering the following question. Would you want to live in a home that has a fully functioning recording studio running out of its basement? Let me know if that type of business would be a nuisance to your private life in the comments below. Otherwise, like, subscribe, and turn on those notifications to make sure you never miss a video. My name is Kara, and if you'd like to join me on another tour, then don't go anywhere yet, because coming up, I'm taking you inside the homes of Taylor Swift. I'll see you next time. Bye. For more than 10 years, Taylor Swift has dominated the music industry with her numerous hit albums, highly sought after tours, including the trendy Eras tour, which has been sold out AF and more, resulting in a net worth reaching hundreds of millions. The 33 year old superstar might also be able to embrace the title of real estate mogul soon too, considering she owns a handful of unique properties from a lavish Manhattan penthouse to a Rhode Island mansion, a classic Nashville estate and more. It's at the T 
Swift's real estate is valued at over $80 million in total. So when she's not busy in the studio or on stage singing to sold out venues, she has quite the selection of luxury homes to unwind at. For our first stop, let's check out New York City, where Taylor Swift basically purchased an entire block for $47.7 million. First spot in the big city was made back in 2014 when she bought two neighboring penthouses in the Tribeca neighborhood for $19.95 million. Then in 2018, Taylor also snagged the second floor complex in the same building for almost $10 million, which spans over 3,500 square feet of space. Tribeca duplex had a beautiful design to the interiors by the looks of it, and there were amazing features such as an indoor pool. The master suite here boasted floor to ceiling windows with Manhattan city views, but we can see each bedroom had its very own charm and unique furnishings. I love the old world touches throughout this space, which we can see in the chandeliers, headboards, and more. The informal dining room also has full walls of windows on one side. Well, there's also a pass-through window to the attached kitchen, which offers stainless steel appliances. Elsewhere, there's a double height living room with a fireplace and an ornate chandelier, as well as a cozier den with yet another fireplace and beam ceilings overhead. Also in 2017, Taylor bought a 100 year old four level townhome next door for $18 million, which boasted features like a gym, a spa, antique wide plank wood floors, and a planted terrace with a Japanese paper glass wall. The townhouse boasted seven bedrooms and six baths in total, with three of the bedrooms located in a next door apartment. So that would be useful for Taylor's guests or even staff. This townhome was designed by famed architect Leopoldo Rosati and offers a lot of wood paneling, modern vibes, and natural light throughout. A large and open living room has skylights up above, while the kitchen is compact yet chic, comprised of stainless steel appliances and dark wood. The bedrooms were also spacious, with plenty of windows and views of the city, and elsewhere the residents, there were features like a home movie theater and a rooftop patio. Despite how impressive Taylor's Tribeca compound is, she's since submitted plenty of permits for over a million dollars in renovation. So you already know that she's probably done some work to the place. Most recently, the singer's one-time townhouse in the West Village area, which she rented in 2016, while waiting out the renovations of her combined penthouse, went up for sale. At the time it was put on the market, the sellers were asking $17.99 million. And what's more, it's the home that inspired T. Swift's Cornelia Street to, one of my favorites. The former carriage house on the name-worthy Cornelia Street was first looking for renters, not buyers, at the cool price $45,000 a month late last year. While this 153 year old residence still maintains its classic brick exterior, inside it has been thoroughly modernized. When Taylor needs a getaway, she has her Rhode Island mansion to escape to, which she reportedly snagged in an all cash deal for $17.75 million. The property sits on five acres of land with over 700 feet of beachfront, not to mention it's on the highest point in Watch Hill, giving T-Swift amazing views of the water. The quiet neighborhood hood isn't a huge spot for most celebrities, but that might have been a draw for Taylor to get some much needed privacy. It's rumored that her song, The Last Great American Dynasty, was actually inspired by her Watch Hill property. Let me explain. The song details the previous owners of the estate, especially Rebecca Harkness, who was the widow of Standard Oil heir William Hale Harkness. This was with whom she picked out a home and called in Holiday House shortly before he passed away in 1957. Also, according to Taylor's song. After the four story home was occupied by Rebecca and women with madness, their men and bad habits, it was left empty for 50 years before the singer eventually purchased it. She then goes on to sing, who knows if I'd never showed up, what could have been? Either way, the Rhode Island estate spans 12,000 square feet inside with eight beds, nine baths, and eight fireplaces throughout. Not to mention plenty of space for all her guests when she throws her summer parties. The interior of the home has many period features like you might expect from a 1930s state, such as the fireplaces, as well as hardwood floors, crown moldings, and two kitchens, including a service kitchen. We can tell the generous living spaces come in handy as Taylor has been known to entertain her fellow artists and models at the home. Most notably, her famed 4th of July parties where a ton of photos have been posted to Instagram in the past, showing off her kitchens, common rooms, and many terraces. Being a Nashville 
Nashville native, of course, T Swift also owns property here. One of her first ever real estate purchases was in 2009 when she bought a penthouse on Nashville's Music Row for $1.9 million, which spans over 3,200 square feet of space. It's a corner unit with three bedrooms and 4.5 bathrooms over two levels. The penthouse is located at the Adelicia Complex and offers soaring ceilings and plenty of floor to ceiling windows overlooking the city views. Other amenities in the building itself include a heated Olympic length pool, gym, and a personal trainer. Not to mention, we've caught glimpses inside Taylor's apartment here, and the design was surprisingly unique. It was playful and girly with vibrant splashes of color. Taylor also owns another estate in Nashville, her mansion in the Forest Hills neighborhood, which she bought in 2011. The Greek Revival estate was built in 1934 by the ambassador to Denmark at the time, and the main home spans 5,600 square feet with four beds and four bath. Known as the Northumberland Estate, Taylor snagged the property for $2.5 million, but these days it would probably be worth double that. It's said that Taylor purchased the home for her parents who have lived there for almost all her life, but either way, this massive mansion is big enough for the whole family. Walking in, there's an entry foyer with curved staircase and chandelier overhead, while other grand living spaces include a blue painted dining room, formal living room with vaulted beamed ceilings, a library, and more. The home is full of old southern charm and also includes vaulted ceilings, marble fireplaces and classic touches throughout, while all the bedrooms are roomy and comfortable. I'm sure that even if Taylor did buy the place for her parents, she likely got her pick of any one of these stunning guest rooms to make her own. It's only fair. Outside you'll find a pool and a detached 2,000 square foot guest house. Taylor basically loves spending time in Nashville still because it's also where she launched her music career and she claims to love the laid back vibe and being able to go out to the store without swarms of paparazzi. While that's far from an exhaustive list of Taylor Swift's properties, these are the places which the starlet likely spends most of her time. And for today, that'll wrap up this house tour. But before we go, answer this question for me. It might be hard to choose, but what is your favorite T Swift? Swift song and why. That one's for all my Swifties out there. Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow me on Instagram to chat. I'm Kara the Vampire Slayer and I'll see you all in another video. Bye!